Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our success Thursday this week with Hari Tunturivuori. Hey, Hari, welcome back. Thank you. Hello. I'm happy to be back. Absolutely. So Thursdays are success Thursdays. We talk about success in a minute. But before we dive into that, Hari, share with us, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Yeah, um, a favorite is, is a, I, don't, I don't have a favorite one <laughs> as such. Uh, I think it's, it's good to have uh, different retrospectives depending on, on uh, where you are as a team and, and to, to um, mix it up. But uh, that, that being said, um, I do have a, a one that I really enjoy now, which I haven't been using for long. Uh, and I've started to take it in. And, and uh, so that would be my favorite at the moment, maybe, so to say. And that is uh, Lean Coffee. That's the one I, I really like right now. And, so how, uh, how did you discover Lean Coffee and, and why did it become so uh, enjoyable for you as a retrospective format? Yeah, the, I don't remember how I and when I discovered, because it's something that we talked about quite much uh, and I've had it in different uh, discussions and so on, but never as a retrospective as such. So uh, I've been in, in uh, different uh, forums where, where it has been used and uh, and uh, then, then I uh, were thinking uh, uh, some time back that uh, we, we would really need some time to actually discuss the things that we come up because I have been using quite much the different ones with a lot of post-its and you come up with different problems and, and problems to solve. So uh, sailboat exercise and uh, uh, good, bad, and uh, yeah, all those uh, different formats that, that uh, the internet is full of. And uh, this Lean Coffee, it, it gives you the time to, to dig into uh, a topic more. So, so I think that's really, really good. And uh, and it, it, yeah, I think it's good because also it can be tailored to the team's needs. Um, I don't know if, if uh, the listeners uh, are familiar with Lean Coffee, but it's, it's uh, uh, for, for those who are not, it's just a quick over, overview is that, uh, that you start with listing topics to talk about and then you have a vote and, uh, and then you spend uh, uh, the time box per uh, topic from the most prioritized ones or the highest voted ones and talk about them for a for a time box amount of time and uh, this can can uh, be quite flexible because if you talk let's say it's it's uh, eight minutes about something and then after those eight minutes you're not you feel you're not done then you can continue uh, talking about it so you don't have to stop just because of that and, and that gives the time to actually dig into the problems that might have been uncovered before or or so so, so it gets you some time so that's why why i like that and also it helps stop the conversations that don't go anywhere right because the whole team votes on whether you continue to discuss the topic or not so it's yes. also very um uh, inclusive in terms of who gets to decide what gets discussed uh, it, the person who talks the most is not going to dominate the discussion, at least yeah, not for exactly. long. Exactly, and and I think that the first time I did this in, as a retrospective, was, I was actually a bit nervous that nothing will come out of it because it's so open. But uh, by magic, it always gets good discussions going. So. Yeah, it is a bit like magic. And uh, yeah. we've had uh, Lean Coffee discussed several times here on the podcast. I'll, I'll put the link on the show notes so that people can easily find the other episodes. And it's definitely a great format and a very interactive format for the retrospectives. Mm -hmm. So, Harry, now we turn our attention to ourselves as Scrum Masters and we explore what success means. So tell us, what does success mean for you as a Scrum Master? 
Yeah, well, uh, that that's a difficult uh, question again. It's like it's easy to just go about and do, doing things, uh, and and uh, of course, success as scrum master, um, yeah, can be de be defined in many ways. Um, but for me, it's uh, to help the team uh, to to deliver uh, both deliver high quality products, but but maybe even more to. Uh, uh, foster culture uh, of uh, continuous improvement and uh, ensuring or ensuring helping uh, the team uh, with, with getting the satisfaction and engagement and uh, and also promoting uh, good com communication collaboration so yeah the, the product it's important but maybe even more important is the team and that, that they can continue uh, and they like the work that they're doing as well so you, you talked about one thing that I want to explore a little bit further. You said uh, the product is important, but the team is also important. That refers back to uh, way back when, I don't know if this was in the Scrum Guide, but elsewhere, perhaps uh, um, it could be even the, the original Agile Software Development with Scrum Book. But uh, <clears throat> in those times, we talked about having Scrum having two deliverables, right? Like one was the product that the team was developing, and then the other was the team that was able to continue to develop that product into the foreseeable future, right? Like that was on also one of uh, the aspect of sustainable pace. Uh, when you think about the Scrum Master as, as a, a, a role that is there to help the team, uh, how do you now these days with the experience that you already have, how do you kind of look at this aspect of building the team, right? Like having the team as one of the deliverables, how do you bring that into your work as a scrum master? Yeah, it's uh, so, something that happens, uh, but uh, I think it's much about also building uh, uh, the, the having the uh, psychological safety in the team and uh, and uh, being uh, showing that yourself that you're uh, also when you make mistakes and stuff to to uh, own up to them but but uh, also to have have a, a little bit of fun and and, and such, such like that but uh, i think it's uh, it's much um, just uh, again uh, to listen to people, to to make sure that they feel heard. It's uh, very much the soft skills. Uh, the soft skills are. It's a bit more challenging, I think. To to you, you don't have the do this, this, and this, and it will always work. It's it's more like listen in, and and uh, each situation you have to navigate a little bit differently. So uh, and of course, if you have a, a product that people like to work on it becomes easier um a, a few days back when when, when we talked about uh, the failed project that i had uh, there there it was very easy to get the team going because they were really into the technique technical things uh, and they really liked the product and and that was also something that drives the motivation so it's it's many things and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and and it's also for us to look at those things and see okay are, mm -hmm. is the team motivated do they believe in the product what's missing why don't they believe in the product do mm -hmm. i believe in the product right because you can't help anyone believe in something you yourself don't believe in and those yeah. aspects become important uh, uh what i was thinking is that as scrum masters very often we're we're focusing you know are is the team communicating about you know the work that they are doing are they collaborating are they helping each other but we don't often talk about uh is the team functioning as a team are they motivated to work together not you know people might be motivated to work with technology they might motiv be motivated to work with um, uh, a, a specific product or functionality that they care about, but are they motivated to work with each other? Like, do they get energy mm -hmm. from working together? And uh, that's one of the things that caught my eye in your in your bio as well, right? Like mm -hmm. moving a group of teams from just a group of people from just being a group of people to being a great team, and that takes a lot of effort and focus for us as scrum masters. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, also. Uh, uh, one thing is that 
uh, a team of or sometimes it, it, it's it's as, as you said it's a group of people that happen to be working on the same product uh, and that's not not really a team so uh, uh, it's more like if, if a team uh, uh, need, if they need each other to deliver the product, that's one one thing uh, that should be an, an and uh, then to get them to know each other as well. So I sometimes I have some, especially in the beginning of of, of teams, but also all, all through when we have worked together for a while. I, I like to have workshops where we talk about uh, more like softer uh, things. Uh, um not too long ago i made a, the exercise called journey lines uh which is that the team members uh, tell about uh, in this case it was the, their journey in the professional life uh, and uh, tell how they got from when they started to work to where they are today and and also um taking in some personal aspects there so we get to know each other as people also, not only as uh, as professionals. So I think that's that's important. Yeah, helping the team members getting to know each other as people is definitely a great investment, especially at the start when the team is forming. Mm. Thank and, you for sharing also, that. Uh, yes, yeah, go, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, um, because nowadays it's it's much uh, distributed teams. It becomes so much more easy when you're in the same room. And then when you're more distributed, it it's uh, it poses another challenge, and I think then it's even more uh, important to do these things. So, uh, and uh, but that uh, that's uh, also something that uh, has become much better now with all the technical tools that we have. So, so uh, leading workshop with Miro, for example, that's uh, something that can be done very much, and and uh, all the video. Uh, Meeting like, like the one like the one we are using right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It it's so much easier than it was uh when you got started, for sure. Yeah. Harry, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you so much. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.